Nepal, the birthplace of Buddhism. A magical and mysterious land in which legends such as the fabled Shangri-La and the elusive Yeti have dominated culture for generations. But a new story has emerged. One that is being seen as a modern miracle, something only possible through the spiritual power of Buddhism. It's a phenomenon that, that people draw great pride and inspiration from here. Ram Bonjan, a 15-year-old boy, has been meditating in dense jungle without food or water for 10 months. Many suggest he is a physiological and cognitive freak with such immense power of mind over matter that it could change the way we look at modern science and medicine forever. It is here we start recording. By the end of our first day, Ram has not moved a muscle since we began filming eight hours previously. Many of the sellers and pilgrims think he is the reincarnation of Buddha. His dream has been to gain a Buddha's knowledge and spread the light of peace. The similarities are uncanny. Siddhartha, the Buddha, was born a mere 150 miles away to a mother with the same name, Maya Devi. Both chose to meditate for six years under the same type of tree and follow a life of abstinence. Buddha eventually found enlightenment through meditation, and that is what Ram is trying to achieve. You can see a light coming from the top of his head and sometimes from his forehead. Many of the stories that are circulating the site are probably just gossip, but they all feed the myth and the growing aura of the boy. One story that started the legend was that poisonous snakes bit him on two separate occasions. I saw him after the snake bite and he looked very pale. Cobras and vipers are common to the area and their bite is fatal. Incredibly, Ram required no medical attention from the bites. Because of his meditation, he flew, I mean, the, the poison. I heard about it. Some saw the blood, but no one saw the snake. He was sweating there, and with the sweating, his poison was born. Uh, the boy himself does seem to have uh, some spiritual powers. If we were beaten by a snake, we were already gone. Just because of his med pure meditation, he's alive. You know, you could question if, you're, uh, if you don't believe in these things, but the people seem to, his family seems to have faith in it, so we have to sort of recognize that. True or not, it is apparent that Ram Bonjan is putting himself in danger, not only by refusing sustenance, but also by sitting exposed to the elements and wildlife. This fatalistic attitude to death is very common in Asia. Any stories about these Rishimnis and uh, these great sages in the past? Some of them uh, could live without food and water for many years, not many months. In modern literature, Giri Bala, the non-eating saint, survived without food and water for 66 years, the longest time on record. Today there are many that claim extreme fasting, from Pilot Baba, who survived underwater for five days without breathing, to Yog Mata, who buried herself alive for 72 hours. Even in Buddhist philosophy, there are people like that. Five hours into the second day of watching Ram, detained at the 25-meter fence, a chance arises to try and find some answers to this extreme fasting phenomenon. Lama Lekshi, Grand Master from India, runs several monasteries around the world. It was at one of these that Ram was taught meditation. The Lama has come to check on his pupil and allows us to follow him into the inner sanctum. The boy uh, belongs to uh, Jiku Buddhist monastery, which is in India, in Himachal Pradesh. And that monastery belongs to the Sakya tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. Very little is known of Sakya, one of the four Buddhist traditions. Its leaders keep their teachings a closely guarded secret. To understand how Ram learned the practice of Jumo and continues to survive without food and water, we must look into his past and his first visit to Lumbini, the birthplace of Buddha. After Lumbini, Ram chose to study at a secret Tibetan monastery near Dehradun, India, 10,000 feet up in the Himalayan mountains and cut off from civilization. There are many examples of monks practicing Tumo intensive meditation in the hills nearby. Ram sort of uh, gravitate toward this monastery, and at that moment, I think it was 2002, I think, or 2003, that he came. It's sort of like his own recognition. 
And but he's two different. He's two different. Why is he two different? There's a, so it's something to like so different to the other monks. Two modes. A particular form of Tibetan meditation where the exponents are capable of withstanding extremely harsh conditions with very little food, very little water, and very little clothing. Some lamas are doing meditation in the icy Himalaya. Uh, from their body, they bring the heat. So, same way, maybe he has done that. American scientists tested the theory in 1982. Monks were soaked in sheets of cold water. 45 minutes later, steam began rising through the cloth. Some of the studies that I've been doing have shown that even novices using Tibetan chanting can increase their tolerance to cold pressure pain by 100% uh, or more. But imagine he can do this for hours and hours on day's ends. Extremely special skill. Ram Bonjan has been sitting under a tree in the jungle of southern Nepal. His supporters claim without food or water for 10 months. 48 hours ago, we started filming continuously, day and night. Just what should his body be going through? I think he's practicing types of ancient yogic exercises where you can feed on one breath or feed on uh, the element in the air. The bark of the people tree that Ram sits under can have a powerful healing effect on skin complaints, such as the physical signs of dehydration. However, its sap is poisonous, and its berries, while edible, only appear for two months of the year. He must be surviving on something else. So far, we've not seen anything to suggest he's being fed or allowed to leave the site. There's only one way out, and that is where we observe from. And we are not the only ones to be doing an investigation. Ram back to Gurung and his science team have been doing independent research for the government and have been observing Buddha Boy for six days. Even there is from morning to evening, like this meditation, it is, it's not normal. Overnight, the temperature reaches a low of three degrees centigrade, the coldest night yet since our arrival. The investigators and security shiver under blankets, but Ram is wearing just a thin cloth. What you should see in a cold evening is him physically shivering. So if he isn't shivering, he's managing to suppress the natural urge to maintain his body temperature at 36.8 degrees centigrade. This is more evidence to suggest Ram is doing the yogic technique of intense tumo meditation, generating his own body heat and preventing the onset of hypothermia. At six in the morning, we rush into the enclosure. Someone claims there's a blue light coming from his head. We cannot see it. How is Ram surviving without moving? There are theories about surviving off the environment, but everything is just conjecture. Nothing is fact. Until now. While we were away, 59 people witnessed Ram spontaneously burst into flames as fire erupted from his chest. On the 5th of January, Wednesday, around 8 o'clock, we saw fire coming from him. He stood and threw the cloth in front of him and was naked in the middle of a burning fire. And then after some time, in a very soft voice, he called for his brother. He asked for a red robe to be thrown over him. He wrapped the cloth over his body and he said, let him concentrate on his meditation and do not disturb him. Over the past 300 years, there have been more than 200 reports of spontaneous combustion, the burning of a body without an identifiable ignition source. Its cause is an unsolved mystery. However, looking at previous evidence of Ram's sweating and assuming that he can control and increase his body's temperature through tumor meditation, maybe this is an extreme demonstration of his power, or just an increasingly elaborate hoax to gain more publicity. We reset our cameras to record the next four days and nights, the length of time it takes for a human to die without fluid. This is the only way we can prove if he is genuine or not. After 48 hours of continuous observation, Ram still hasn't moved. What is almost unbelievable is the fact that this child manages to stay in the same position during waking hours and sleeping hours. Try sitting for, for 30 minutes or an hour, three hours, not moving, just concentrating. We've been observing Ram Bonjan continuously in the jungles of Nepal for 86 hours. In that time, we've not seen him take any food or fluid or show any signs of dehydration. An average human should be just a few hours away from death. With a prolonged deficiency of food and water, you really, your brain is going to lack the glucose, you're not going to have enough fluid in your system. As you progress, without those fluids, you become delirious. 
In the beginning, he used to walk around this tree in the morning, chanting mantras. After that, he meditated for three months before going into the deep trance that he's in today. After a thorough search inside the tree and the ground area surrounding Ram, there's nothing suspicious. No food pipes buried or supplies hidden. Are people there creating a scam for us to believe in? I hope not. It would be an elaborate scam to do that. Surely if it was a scam, someone within the committee would have let on, told the papers, weakened for money. The people in this area, they don't tell lies. They tell the truth that you have. That is also the proof. After 96 hours of filming, Ram has defied modern science by continuing his meditation and remaining alive. Many of the pilgrims at the site are from a scientific background and are torn by what they see. Is he a miracle or a myth? We have whole religions built around miracles. Jesus rose from the grave. Millions of people believe that. That's the center and core of their religion. How do we say in another culture it's not possible? Everything is possible. Medical science. Medical science. Medical science.